So begin with our service, so Reverend Louis Gates will light the three lights symbolizing the unity of body, mind, and spirit. And Louis, uh, Reverend Gates, while you're here, would you uh, address our assembly? Thank you. Thank you, everyone, especially the ones that are online. Thank you for tuning in. I hope everyone had an awesome 4th of July. Uh, remember, uh, we are having in-person services and streaming online. We're in the process of trying to get back in our church, so I announced that if you want to donate something to the organization as far as monetary value, um, just contact the office or push the donate button and make sure you write in the things to Colby fun so that we can get back in the church so let give you guys a little idea the whole inside the whole inside whole inside of the church has been repainted the back rooms have been redone there's been new floor put on the platform uh, we've had the benches restained some of them that needed to be restained we're in the process of taking down all the fluorescent lights and replacing them with something else I was I got voted down I said disco balls but they said no they couldn't put those up but but we're going to have brand new lights put in the temple and all the electric is going to be upgraded and the door is going to be upgraded. What we're working on now is trying to get the front support done. And once that's done, we'll be back in. We'll be meeting back down at the church. So we're still working on that. That should be probably about three to four weeks out, hopefully. So, but if you want to donate to the betterment of the church or actually for the repair of the church, just make sure it says Colby Fun. And it'll go to specifically to that situation. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Gates. Does everyone have a bulletin today? Everyone? Okay. Very good. And now we will have our invocation. Please stand if you're able and take an attitude of prayer. Infinite intelligence, as we celebrate the independence of our country, we give thanks for our freedom of religion and just as important, our spiritual freedom. Bless those who bring the food to our tables, the farmers, the drivers, the grocers, and others who provide our daily feast. We are indeed grateful for our speaker today who will enrich our minds with food for thought. And so it is, amen. You may be seated. Located um, in our bulletin are Declaration of Principles, and please join with me in reciting these principles together. We believe in infinite intelligence. We believe that the phenomena of nature, both physical and spiritual, are the expression of infinite intelligence. We affirm that a correct understanding of such expression and living in accordance therewith constitute true religion. We affirm that the existence and personal identity of the individual continue after the change called death. We affirm that communication with the soul called dead is a fact, scientifically proven by the phenomena of spiritualism. We believe that the highest morality is contained in the golden rule. Whatsoever ye would that others should do unto you, do ye also unto them. We affirm the moral responsibility of the individual and that he, she makes his own happiness or unhappiness as he, she obeys or disobeys nature's physical and spiritual laws. We affirm that the doorway to reformation is never closed against any human, human soul here or hereafter. We affirm that the precepts of prophecy and healing contained in the Bible are divine attributes proven through mediumship. And in the bulletin right uh, should be the healing prayer. It is. And so please recite with me the prayer for spiritual healing. I ask the great unseen healing force 
to remove all obstructions from my mind and body and to restore me to perfect health. I ask this in all sincerity and honesty, and I will do my part. I ask this great unseen healing force to help both present and absent ones who are in need of help and to restore them to perfect health. I put my trust in the love and power of God. And now we will now join together in a healing meditation. If you will plant your feet on the floor. Take everything off your lats, have your hands open, and close your eyes. For the purpose of this meditation, I want you just to fashion that you are at the beach and you're walking along the beach and your feet walk along the soft, warm sand. And as you walk, breathe slowly, deeply, naturally. Focus your attention on the rhythm of your steps. Left foot, right foot, left, right, left, right. Allow this rhythm to soothe and relax you. Feel your energy increase with each step. And when each foot touches the ground, feel the energy rising all the way from your foot up through your legs, your hips, your body, your arms all the way to the top of your head. The slight vibration when your foot lands on the ground serves to increase your relaxation and help you feel calm and energized. Your legs feel strong supporting the weight of your body. Notice the slight weight shifts that allow you to walk from heel to the front of your foot and then transferring to the heel of the other foot, the front of that foot. Now back to the first foot and notice these weights shifts. Notice the ever repeating pattern of your steps. It is almost as if your feet are a wheel rolling and rolling one part contacts the earth while the other part is in the air. And if time slowed down, you would notice that almost imperceptibly the weight shifts from one part of the wheel to the next and the next the next until what was the bottom of the wheel is now the top. 
no part of this imaginary wheel, no part of your feet remains on the ground for long before transferring the weight to another part of your feet. Continuous motion is continuing the relaxing walk. Motion is very relaxing. Imagine the rhythm of your feet, waves flowing in and out, ever repeating. Allow your breath to flow smoothly, ever repeating like waves, in and out, in and out. And hear the sounds of your footsteps, a calming, relaxing rhythm just listening to this repeated beat, footsteps, heartbeat, breathing, the smooth cycle of rhythm, rhythm that allows you to proceed forward in a leisurely walk. And so we ask the infinite intelligence, the spiritual eyes of our soul, that we be released from any darkness around us by the delusion of outward senses that we may perceive and understand those things spiritual. And we are now ready to return to Andrew Jackson Davis. And when you are ready, open your eyes. And now we're going to play Amazing Grace. I am delighted and honored to introduce our speaker today. I met the Reverend Steve Atkins in the 1980s. He was one of my first teachers. He is a certified healer, medium, and teacher. His travels include many stays at Arthur Finney College in England, where he gains continuing education in spiritualism. I encourage you to seek his counsel on books to read in, in our bookstore and inquire about his next class. Please give a warm welcome to my friend and yours, the Reverend Steve Atkins. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for all coming here given of your time, beautiful day to day. I can remember 35 years ago when I walked into this building, 1985, 
we were having church up here then because it was the heat of the summer and there was no air conditioning in the temple at that time. So every summer they used to move up here to have their church services until we put air conditioning on the building. So it's an interesting full circle type of thing that happens. Today I'm going to speak a little bit on personal responsibility because it's the cornerstone of, of our faith. That song that you just heard, Amazing Grace, every time I hear that I remember the movie The Titanic and the musicians that were on it played this song as the ship was going down because they knew they weren't going to get off. They knew they were all going to die. So they wanted to do something positive for the situation that was going on around them. And they sat on the deck and played that song until they couldn't play it anymore. And these are people embracing their spirituality, embracing that which they know can make things better around them regardless of their own personal experience or personal convictions. And it seems like we're in that kind of era right now with all that's going on around us. A lot of people are be driven to the limit of their fears about what's going on. They're reacting in different fashions. And I have to confess that I've reacted a bit inappropriately sometimes on social media when uh, I've had a number of relatives that have almost disowned me because of my opinions. And um, I, I'm afraid I got a little t harsh with them and we kind of came to a full circle agreement and I invited them to come down here and enjoy my home that's on a lake and they we all kind of got back together but it's easy to get dragged into that emotional response about things especially in times like right now and i encourage you regardless of what your personal belief is politically or personally about what's going on that you allow other people the freedom to be who they choose to be you know and that's the key allowing other people the right to be who they choose to be and I encourage you to do that because our spiritualist, as spiritualists, we embrace, as I said, personal responsibility. And I was speaking with a young man over here. I forget, what was your name? I know I've seen Corey. you quite a bit here. What is it? Corey. Corey was saying how he studies the golden rule, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. And that's the key to personal responsibility because it makes you step beyond your instincts. It makes you step beyond your fears and need to preserve self and help somebody else. Now, I'm not saying that you should go out and put yourself in harm's way or be in danger, but you need to communicate with that more spiritual side of yourself and allow it to have a say in what's going on with you right now. Um, spiritualism embraces the concept that death and birth are the same. They both come from God. They're both progressions on your way of life. Entering this life and leaving this life should be celebrated the same, not feared one way or the other. And if you have that concept, a lot of your, your reaction to the world around you lessens and softens quite a bit. I, I started rereading a book by H. Gordon Burroughs called Becoming a Spiritualist, and it's a very interesting text because... Some of it's very much on spiritualism and some of it's very much on spiritual development. And I would, I read an interesting concept there. He had a statement in, in the first few pages that said, knowledge is the savior of the world, not sacrifice. Because a lot of us have been taught through our lives, myself included, that we have to give up things in order to change, that we have to to, to, to set, for lack of a better term, sacrifice part of who we are so we can be a better person. But that doesn't really work too long, for, at least for me, because I was an alcoholic and still am, but I don't drink and haven't drank since I was 35. And that cycle will repeat itself through and through again when you don't break that chain. You need to be able to step into the concept of who you are. You need to be able to step back into who you are and look at what you're doing, not react to the world around you, not react to external situations. And if you take time to see why you're reacting the way you're reacting, it may not change the situation you're in, but it will change how you approach it and what you say to people around you. So I encourage you to begin to practice this part of self-sacrifice, well, not self-sacrifice, but 
practicing knowledge instead of giving up things thinking it's going to change you. What happens when you embrace knowledge about something is it creates a permanent change within you. It doesn't create this thing where I have to give this up or else. That kind of philosophy led me through a vicious circle of life for a long time because you give it up, you give it up, you give it up, and then you hit this moment where the whole world's crashing in on you and you go back to who you are naturally. So if you haven't changed who you are naturally, it doesn't matter how much you abstain from doing something, you're gonna go back to who you are. So you have to work internally to change that which you are. And it's done through spiritual inspiration. It's done through spiritual insight. And am I standing here saying, like I t said in the beginning, I told you I acted quite inappropriately because I got driven back to that point of myself where I wanted to defend who I was, where I wanted to prove who I was was correct and the other people were wrong. But there's no black and white like that in the spirit realm. How you choose to act, is how you're judged and how you move forward. And I don't mean judged by this omnipotent spirit that keeps marks of right and wrong and at the end of your life you're judged by that. What I mean is you are judged by those around you, how you act, what you say, what you do. You may have a perfectly justifiable reason for saying what you do in your own mind, but the people that you react to are reacting from their concept of their own right or wrong. So you need to be in tune with spirit because spirit sees all of this. They see the whole picture and the inspiration they're giving you is what will be best for the whole situation. Sometimes I vehemently disagree with it um, and I resist it until I finally have to kind of begin to put it into practice because what happens is they bring something into my mind that maybe I ought to consider trying to become aware of. And then little things keep happening more and more and more in my life until it gets to be a, an issue with me where I really have to decide to follow that guidance. Spiritualism, as I said, is a religion of happiness. They don't encourage you to think that this is the only religion. They don't encourage you to feel that this is the only way to happiness. This is a way to happiness, not the way to happiness. As you step through your life, you encounter yourself time and time again. And that's who you have to deal with more than anybody else, anything else. I've learned this through several styles of discipline over the years, and each time I've embraced it, it's changed my life a little bit. It started in the 70s with taking, studying Kundalini Yoga, and back then it was taught by Sikhs, not by people in, in the YMCA or things like that, and I'm not downing those teachers, <clears throat> but back then it was taught by adepts at, the spirit, at, at a faith of, of religion and religious belief. And that was incorporated into that. So there were self-awareness techniques taught, not just positions and breathing and things of that nature. I then moved into a belief system um, of, of just pure hedonism for about 10 years, just drinking and hell raising and carrying on. But I was able to look at myself and know what I was. I never made excuses for it. I knew what I was doing and I embraced it fully. So God was able to work with me. Spirit realm was able to work with me within that perspective. Because if you're not hiding from yourself and you're admitting, again, personal responsibility, admitting who you are, what you are, and what you've done, the spirit realm works within that concept to present things to you because you're working within a true fashion and viewing yourself truly. Viewing yourself in truth doesn't mean seeing the spiritual being that you are. It can be, but it means seeing you, who you are, and what you are now in truth and be, being willing to change that to a certain extent. So again, personal responsibility, looking at self. You're responsible for what you do, what you say, and how you act every time you do and say that, regardless of the reason you've done it. If you were to have to defend your home 
against an invader and you seriously injured or killed someone trying to defend your home and your life, you would still feel terrible at the end of it. You would not feel justified in doing that. If, as a spiritual person, you would feel horrible about having to have done that. And you'd have to put that into perspective. And that's what I mean, looking at yourself. Don't justify what you do. See why you did it, how you did it, and what the result of it was. This, is, this type of perception allows you the freedom in your life to move past other people's opinions. It allows you to move past limiting situations. It allows you to be self-defined. Self it allows you to be sure of yourself when you step into any unknown situation because you have that higher guidance. You, ha you know that inspiration is going to come. The only weakness you have with that is being able to employ it with, through your own conscious mind. Personal responsibility allows you to feel the truth of what's going on. And that's what you need to do is feel it. Sometimes you can't consciously think or make conclusions about it, but you feel that movement just like a beautiful song makes you relax into the beauty of what it is. The truth of who you are is as beautiful as the best song you've ever heard. The problem is, is that we live in a physical world. We're born into a world that is finite, that drives you by its environment, physically and emotionally. The other people you meet do the same thing. They drive you by your instincts and the environment you're in. The whole struggle between good and evil, for lack of a better terms, by spiritualists is you struggling with that human nature of who you are to be the spiritual person that you should be. It also gives you a balance. Um, I was speaking also to someone earlier today and you can't become so spiritually you're no earthly good. You know, you, you can embrace all these wonderful spiritual truths and hold them up like a shield in front of you and unless you've incorporated them into the being that you are and acting outwardly through the knowledge of that, that shield will not hold. It will fail because you won't have incorporated it into who you are. There's an old saying that I use quite a bit and it says, um, the difference between knowledge and wisdom is that knowledge is knowing that a tomato is a fruit and wisdom is knowing not to put it into a fruit salad. That's how the spiritual knowledge works with you as you embrace that knowledge and as you practice it to the world around you, you begin to get that personal experience of how it fits in your life, how it's interpreted in your life for you through your abilities you're given here. That's why there's no blanket that you can give to everybody. Everybody has a little nuance to it, a little shift and how they're going to practice it through their life as the individual soul that they are. And you have to honor that, even if it's very disagreeable to you at times. They're guided by God as surely as you are, and you have to honor that. You don't have to sit there and listen to it sometimes. You're, you have the freedom to turn around and walk off or turn off your phone or turn off your computer. But you have to honor those people and how God's working with them and the consequences and difficulties that are being put into their life by that belief. It's not my job to change those consequences or those reactions that people have to life around them. It's only for me to be self-defined, to believe the way I believe, and let my actions exhibit themselves. It's kind of odd because, uh, as I said, I've gotten into a bit of discussions with people on digitally, and it's funny because pe people say stuff digitally that they would never say to your face. You know, they, they just kind of flow with it. And it's not that they're afraid of you or afraid of physical force being used against them, but they will do it because they don't fear any kind, they can, they can stop too. They can just turn it off if they don't like what you're saying. 
And I've been accused of being a racist. I've been accused of being everything under the sun because I said I'm proud of who I am and I'm proud of where I come from. Apparently that's being a racist to some people in the world today. And again, that's their, that's their challenge. That's the challenge they have to overcome. It's not up to me to prove that to them that they're right or wrong. As you move through this concept again of looking inward, and I don't really agree with that word too much because looking inward, people sit there and meditate and say, I don't, I don't see anything inside myself. It's not a matter of looking inside yourself. It's going within the energy of who you are as a spiritual being. It's going, it's shutting out the outside stimulus, shutting out the outside fervor, the outside thoughts that race through your minds and being in the silence of spirit. That's what going within is. Cutting out the outside world for a few moments a day to feel that to feel the correction that Spirit's giving you, to feel the direction that Spirit's giving you. But again, it's suggestions to you. It's not mandates. It's not do this or else. It's a loving, kind suggestion from a higher intelligence than you. And if you had that ability to calmly listen, you're not required to take that advice or you're not going to get any more. That's part of that... Uh, that back and forth type of attitude that we have that's that kind of that, that, that sabotages our own spiritual development. It is a kind, gentle observation of someone and a higher intelligence that you should trust and listen to. But it's just like telling a five-year-old kid, don't do this or you're going to get your fingers burned. Well, they're eventually going to stick their finger in there and get burned and have that personal experience. And then they're going to say, gee, you know, Dad might not have been so wrong with what he said. And that's how we, sometimes we have to go through this. We have to get our fingers burned a little bit to understand what was done. In this time that we're in now, you just have to hold your breath sometimes and just wait for the events to finish unfolding. I've probably personally been spending about two grand a month for the last six months, more than I earned. So I'm a little concerned about financial things, but then I step back and I look at the course of my life. I've raised three kids, I put two of them through college, and I bought and sold four or five houses over that time, being no more than one paycheck away from bankruptcy the whole time. Spirit's always been there. They've always supported me. If I opened my eyes and followed that guidance. As I get ready to close, I'd like to read something to you, or I think I'll just, I usually tell one of my jokes. They're non-political. There was a, a, a group of blind singers that used to go around the, the, the South speaking and, and singing, and they were so good at what they did that people used to feel like they were raised up into heaven while they were singing. And one day they went to this old country church way out in the, in the woods, and they're talking to the pastor. The lead singer's talking to the pastor, and he says, the pastor says to the lead singer, he says, what are you going to do with those C&I dogs while you're up there singing? He says, they're going to sit right down here in front of us, all three of them. He says, those dogs are going to sit in front of you the whole time you're singing. And the lead singer says, yes, they will. The pastor says, you sure they're going to do what you tell them to do? And he says, let me tell you something, pastor. I tell them dogs to sit. They stay there. You tell your congregation something on Sunday, and by Monday, half of them have forgot it. Those dogs won't forget what I tell them to do. You got that? And the pastor says, okay, okay, I'm just checking. <laughs> so the night comes, and they're singing, and everybody's fear hearing them take, take them up to heaven with the harmony and the beauty of the song. And somebody left the back door ajar. And here comes this little calico cat wandering up the aisle, looking around, looking around. And about halfway down that aisle, those dogs caught sight of that cat. You know what those dogs did? 
They forgot. <laughs> Thank you for your time today. <laughs> Thank you, Steve, for your wise counsel. <laughs> Um, there is a prosperity bowl um, right on next to the wall to my left and your right. Uh, we thank you in advance for your um, generosity. And um, this will be used for upkeep of our buildings and our camps. And at this time, I would like to do an a offertory prayer. So if you could take an attitude, if you could stand, please, and take an attitude of prayer. If you can, take an attitude of prayer. Let us pray. Infinite intelligence, bless each offering presented today and bless the giver that he or she will be rewarded tenfold. And so it is. Amen. You may be seated. Um, next Wednesday, July the 8th, our message bearer for our demonstration of spirit service will be the Reverend Phil DeLong. Next Sunday, our speaker for um, July the 12th will be the Reverend Don Cassidy, and our Lyceum speaker will be the Reverend Gregory Kent, and I understand he's going to speak on the Fox Sisters, so that should be very interesting. Every Sunday, we have a adult Lyceum known as Sunday School, Adult Sunday School, from 9.30 to 10.15, right here. To participate in absentee healing, please print the first name and first initial of the last name of a loved one or friend or even a pet in our healing book, which is right against on a stand right against the wall. And please do go to casadega.org to see the events and download a recording of today's service. We will now play this. Thank you. 